Everybody said, yeah. That human looks like human of last January, February. Now, December, final year. Amen. Yeah. I believe you have been renewed. I can't hear you. I believe you have been refreshed. How many of us were at the final solution retreat like I was? Did you see me there? Did I see you? You were there. And all the blessings of that time will remain permanent in every life in Jesus' name. You must be sure that I really appreciate your coming. You know, at this time now, after that retreat, marathon, uh, from Saturday to Sunday to Monday and to Tuesday and Wednesday, I should be sleeping now. But I heard that you were the people coming and I said I must be there. Are you happy? As happy as I am, the Lord bless you. And the Lord refresh your life more. And all our workers everywhere that we are joined together now, I pray that what we are hearing today and the prayer we are praying today will energize us the more and prepare us for crossing over in Jesus' name. Now, this year, at the end of this year, like now this is Saturday, tomorrow Sunday, and then we have Monday, and then the watch night service. The watch night service, before you go to the Congress, tell all your neighbors and tell everybody something wonderful is coming to everyone. I could even have told you now what I'm going to talk about, but you know, it's something I have never spoken about before. Since we've been having a watch night service, and this one is not going to be, you know, old message. It's a new message that will transport you, catapult you, and land you on the victory land in 2020 in Jesus' name. I will be there. You will be there. And a message will be coming to you from a congregation of, at the headquarters. And it's going to be wonderful. Please tell everyone to be in the appropriate location. 2020 is going to be a great year for everyone. Glorious year for everyone. Whoever you are, wherever you are going, the blessings of God will be chasing after you. We'll catch up on you. I said, we'll catch up on you. As the Lord is blessing me, because I know He's going to bless me abundantly, it will splash over to you. Flow over to you. Outpouring, overflowing in your life in Jesus' name. Tonight, are you here with your heart, with your mind, with your spirit, with your attention, with full participation, and with your Bible? God bless you. Father, in Jesus' name, we well, thank you for your people. Thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you because they are committed to doing your work. And I pray, Lord, that this work will prosper in every hand. In Jesus' name, you are taking weariness and tiredness away from your people. I pray that your people will always be up and doing in Jesus' name. We well, will not abandon your work. We will not give any excuse. This work you have committed into our hands will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. Wake us up again. Send us forth that we may go in the power, in the might of the Lord in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to Psalm 116, Psalm 116. I'm reading from verse 12. Psalm 116, verse 12. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? What shall I enter, enter or shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? The psalmist was so appreciative of what God had done in his life. He called them benefits. 
And then he said, instead of my job sitting back, receiving, asking, getting, swallowing, enjoying, I need to give something back. And he was now asking, all these benefits around me, all the blessings of God around me, what can I render unto the Lord for all these benefits he has given unto me? Verse, verse 13, I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. He says, I'll take the cup of salvation with the water of life in there and I will take it to other people. I'll take to my neighbors. I'll take to everyone this cup of salvation and I will also pray unto the Lord. I will call upon his name. Verse 14, I will pay my vows unto the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord. Uh, the psalmist is reminding us, the psalmist is saying, if I were at that congregation, if I were at that convocation, if I were at that assembly of the children of God, and I had all the messages you heard, and I saw the final solution, and I prayed, and the blessings of God came to me, you know what I'll do? I will pay my vows unto the Lord now, after all that blessing. After receiving so much, after getting so much, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. He said, this will not be the time for me to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. This will not be the time for me to separate myself and go any other place. I'll come to the presence of the children of God and I will give my testimony and I will pay my vows in the presence of all his people. Benefits. You will keep your benefits. You'll keep the blessings. Don't shut your amen be lower than five years ago. We're looking at uh, Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, I'm reading from chapter 32. Second Chronicles, we're looking at chapter 32 and uh, verse, uh, verse 24. In Second Chronicles chapter 32, reading here from verse 24, uh, let, let's see uh, the example of this person and see whether he did right or he didn't do right. Look at verse 24 there. It says in verse 24, in those days Ezekiah was sick to the death and he prayed unto the Lord and he spake unto him and he gave him a sign. You know the story. He was sick unto death. And Isaiah said, set your house in order, for thou shalt surely die. And then he prayed. He said, Lord, look at my life. Look at my faithfulness. Look at my righteous life. Even at my perfection. I don't want to die now. And he wept and he cried unto the Lord. And the Lord answered his prayer. Like the Lord has answered your prayer. And told Isaiah, go and tell him that I will kill him and I will deliver this city out of the hands of the enemies. Not only that, I'm going to add 15 eventful years, 15 profitable lives and 15 uh, profitable years unto him. And so he got well. But look at verse 25. But anytime you're reading a good story and then it comes in with but interjects a but it means something went wrong but Ezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him healing benefit long life benefit addition of many years benefit joy benefit and victory benefit the benefit that God had showed him Ezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him for his heart was lifted up it will be unimaginable but you know sometimes it happens like it happened to Ezekiah that after coming from that final solution retreat and we got salvation, 
we got sanctification, we got Holy Ghost baptism, we got healing, we got health, we got deliverance, we got promotion, we got many other blessings. And even, uh, you know, challenges that had been there for many years, God rolled them away. It would be unfortunate that any of us will not render back unto God the, to the benefit he has done for us. And then we become proud, and then it goes on to say that his heart was lifted up, therefore there was wrath upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. You see, we've got the final solution was Jesus Christ. And if we preserve that and we continue in that, the blessings of God, instead of decreasing, will increase in every life in Jesus' name. We're not going to do like Hezekiah, and we're not going to be uh, like ingrates that do not know how to give thanks to God, how to appreciate God for what God has done. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 2. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 2, And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. As the apostle is talking to those who are walking outside, and they have masters, they have leaders, they have directors, he says, those directors and those leaders and those masters, they are believers too, and they have received the same benefit, and so we should render to those leaders and masters in our places of work due respect and due obedience, but now if we go beyond what we have outside and we come to the church, in our house fellowship, we have a leader there. In our zone, we have a leader there. In our district, we have a leader there. In the women's section, we have a leader there. In the children's section, youth section, we have a leader there. In the campus, we have a leader there. In the central church, we have a leader there. And it says, because of the benefits we have received, how we now need to serve the Lord with greater strength and greater ability. If we're teaching, to teach well. If we're praying, to pray well. If we're doing any service, to do that service well. As a mind, as a demonstration of the gratitude we have unto the Lord for the benefits we have received during that final solution. Look at verse 3. If any man teach otherwise... And consent not to wholesome words, even to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, is proud. Like Hezekiah was proud after he had received the benefits. Like Hezekiah was proud after he was healed. Like Hezekiah was proud after he had had all those years added to him. This one now. We've gone to the final solution retreat and the Lord has showered the blessings of heaven upon us. And then we'll come back after receiving so much, after testifying to the great things the Lord has done. Then we render shoddy service to the Lord. Then we render careless service to the Lord. And we even teach things that are not in line with the Word of God. It says it's proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strife of words. We wear up, comments, envy, and strife, and uh, railings, and evil surmise and perverse disputings of men, of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such, from such, from such, did Amatan take your voice away? From such, withdraw thyself. We're so grateful to God for what He has done. 
And because of the great things he has done, anybody that is not grateful to God, anybody that is proud, anybody that goes the old way, anybody that is not living according to the way that we show gratitude to the Lord, will withdraw ourselves. Tonight, we're looking at the message, keeping the benefits of the final solution. The benefits we have got, keeping those benefits, keeping the benefits of the final solution. Three things we're looking at. Number one, our dependence on the heavenly promise keeper. Our dependence on the heavenly promise keeper. He is he has given us promises, and he is the promise keeper. His promises came from heaven, and is the promise keeper that cannot fail, that cannot lie, that cannot disappoint. And because of that, all that he has done to retain them, all that he has done to have them continue in our lives, we depend on him implicitly, our dependence on the heavenly promise keeper. Point number two, our diligence as honest precept keepers precept keepers he gave the promise it's also giving some precepts and and if we're going to keep the benefits of the final solution retreat of the final solution gathering if we're going to keep the benefits i'm going to keep my benefits i'm going to keep my blessings i said i'm going to keep my benefits and i'm going to keep my blessings and everything the Lord has given, we're going to keep in Jesus' name. We must be diligent and look at the precepts of the Lord and keep the precepts that he has given unto us. Our diligence as honest precept keepers. Number three now, the decree in his permanent keeping. The decree in his permanent keeping. If we understand who God is, if we understand the power, the measure, the depth, the height, the length, and the breadth of the power of God, that when he gives his word and he says, this is what I'm going to do, the devil cannot reverse the promise of God in your life. Because it's like a decree, a decree that came from heaven. And God is watching over that decree to make sure that the permanent blessing of the retreat of the decree comes to you. It will be yours. It will be mine. The decree in his permanent keeping. Number one now. Number one, our dependence on the heavenly promise keeper. Promise keeper. That's God. Promise keeper, that's the Almighty. Promise keeper, that's the faithful one. Promise keeper, that's the one that has given us a promise, and that promise he always fulfills. He always fulfills. He always does what he said he will do. Our dependence on the heavenly promise keeper. We're coming to First Kings. Chapter 8, 1 Kings, chapter 8, I read from verse 56, 1 Kings 8, verse 56, Blessed be the Lord that has breathing rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. Look at that. He's giving us rest. He's giving us victory. He's giving us triumph. He's giving us benefits. He's giving us blessing. He's giving us the fulfillment of his word according to all that he promised. There has not failed one word of all his good promise. There has not failed. The promise of God will not fail in your life. There has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses a servant we can depend on him we can rely on him because he's given the promise and the promise will be fulfilled look at Joshua 
chapter 21, Joshua, chapter 21, the faithfulness of the promise keeper and the dependability of the promise keeper. So we can lean on him, we can rely on him because he cannot fail. In Joshua chapter 21, reading from verse 44, Joshua chapter 21, verse 44, And the Lord gave them rest round about, according to all that he swear unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. See that. There stood not a man, no matter how powerful, no matter how magical, and no matter how occultic, there stood not a man before them of all the enemies. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands. That's what will happen to you. In verse 45, they have failed not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. In my life, all came to pass. In your family, all came to pass. In the new year, all will come to pass. Everything he has promised, he will do. Everything he has given, he will increase in your life in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 23 of Joshua. And we're reading from verse 14, 23. Joshua chapter 23, verse 14. It says in verse 14, And behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth. Joshua came to the end of his ministry, and he finished well. You all finished well. He came to the end of his ministry, and he had confidence. He said, Now, behold, this day I am going. It's not like, you know, I'm so sorry for the life I've lived. I'm so sorry for my carelessness. I'm so sorry I wasn't an achiever. I'm so sorry I was not victorious. I'm so sad. How will I meet the Lord? Must I meet the Lord empty-handed? No. His heart was full of joy. And his life was full of achievement. Your life will be full of joy. When it comes your time to go, Angels will be standing at attention waiting for you. And behold, this day I'm going the way of all the earth. And ye know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing has failed. Ye know in all your hearts that not one thing has failed. A watch in all that the Lord your God speak concerning you, all are come to pass unto you. All are come to pass unto you. As we were finishing the retreat, I told you to raise up your Bible, and I said, all the promises there are for you. And everything will come to pass in your life. Not one thing has failed thereof. Not one promise of God will fail in your life in Jesus' name. Your promise, your blessing will be full. Everything he has promised you receive in Jesus' name. Why? Because of what we are reading in Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7, and I'm reading from verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 7, we're looking at uh, verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God. is a promise keeper, is a faithful God, is a promise keeper, is the one that cannot fail. It does not disappoint, there will be no disappointment in your life this coming year in Jesus' name. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. He is the faithful God. And then he goes on to say, which keepeth covenant. is a promise keeper. Which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. What does that mean? 
your generation will be faithful to you. Generation of your children will be faithful to them. Generation of their children will be faithful to them. Generation after generation after generation in the church, those who are here now, and then if Jesus tarries, those who are still coming, those who are still coming, our God will remain faithful to everyone in Jesus' name. And because he's the promise keeper, that's why we lean on him. That's why we're not looking at this direction, that direction, that direction. We're looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Because everything he promised, he will do. And we shall be noting them down as we cross over to the, to the following year, to the coming year. Everything you have asked the Lord, look at this, look at this, look at this. And when they are fulfilled, you will mark them and say, he has done that. Then he has done that. Then he has done that. Your cup will be full and overflowing in Jesus' name. In Deuteronomy chapter 23, Deuteronomy chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 23, uh, verse 5. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Bela. The Lord thy God will not hearken unto anyone that will curse you. The Lord thy God will not hack into anyone that will put a yoke upon you. The Lord thy God will not listen to anybody that will make your life miserable. The Lord thy God will not hack into anyone that will hint that your progress in this coming year. If they talk, they talk in vain. If they curse, they curse in vain. If they oppose, they oppose in vain. If they try to block your way, they do that in vain. As you are getting there, the angel of God will take that uh, barricade away from your way in Jesus' name. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God will not hack in unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee. You didn't hear that one. The Lord thy God, okay, the Lord my God, will turn every curse into blessing unto me. Because the Lord thy God, Lord thee. You see that? It's telling us that good things will happen to us. And that because he's a faithful God, and because he's the promise keeper, we lean on him. We rely on him. We depend on him. And your cup will be full and overflowing. We're looking at Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 15. Genesis 28. Reading from verse 15. And behold, I am with thee. And will keep thee in all the places whither thou goest. Can I proclaim to you that in this coming year and before this coming year, from now till the end of the coming year, no accident on your way. I will keep thee in all the places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Mark that to your Bible like I mark it in my Bible. I will not forsake thee. I will not leave thee. I will not abandon you. I will not leave you by the roadside until I have done that which I have spoken unto thee of. The Lord will do it. Look at verse 17. And, and uh, he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. This is the gate of heaven. This is the gate of heaven. How do you understand that? How do you understand that? Look at that. He said, this is none other but the house of God. House of God. House of God. Where are we now? I said, where are you now? Anytime we come to church, a local church, central church here, regional church, state church, national church, anytime we come, we come to the house of God. 
and the house of God is not the gate of hell, it's not the gate of prison, it's not the gate of a dungeon, it's not the gate of suffering. You need to understand that, that when we come to the house of God, it is the gate of heaven. And the gate of heaven will be opened unto you. Joy will flow into your life. Blessing will flow into your life. If you come to the house of God, and anyone, 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 whatever, preacher or no preacher, pastor or no pastor, anyone that makes your heart, your life miserable in the house of God, he wants to turn the house of God to the gate of hell. You will not listen to them. You will not hear them. If anybody comes to the house of God and then is uttering blasphemy and is saying things that are hypocritical, he wants to turn the, uh, the house of God to the gate of hell, I will not look at them. I will not allow them to spoil my blessing. I will not allow them to take my joy away. Yes, are my people still there? I said I will not allow them in my life. But the people that come to demonstrate to me that the house of God is the gate of heaven and then the blessings of heaven, the goodness of heaven, the riches of heaven are flowing unto me because I am at the gate of heaven. Then I like to come again. Then I like to come again. And when you are coming from home, you are coming from your place, you have any difficulty there, come to the house of God, you'll be at the gate of heaven. And at the gate of heaven, every problem, earthly problem, will be solved in Jesus' name. Look at verse 20. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me, yes, Jacob, he'll be with you. That's what he promised. And will keep me in this way that I go. Yes, Jacob, he will. That's what he did. That's what he promised because he's the faithful promise keeper. And will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. Yes, Jacob, he will do that for you. He will feed you this coming year. You will not die of hunger. You will not die of starvation. You will not die of economic crunch. The Lord will give you all the promotion, all the provision he has for you in Jesus' name. Verse 21, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. I come again to my father's house in peace. I come again to my father's house in peace. Where is your father's house? Here, this is your father's house. You go out, whatever you face outside, whatever, whatever you face outside, any meeting, they come over here. Even before we start to pray, peace will flow into your life. Then shall the Lord be my God. Look at this, look at this, and this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely, I will surely, I will surely, say it with me now, I will surely, I can't hear you. I will surely give the taste unto thee. You didn't say that. You don't like tithes and offerings. Look at Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. It says, it's a promise keeper. It's a faithful God. And all these promises he has given me. And he said, it's going to do everything for me. And he'll bring me back again. As the Lord does that for me, I will contribute to the building of God's house. Your district church will be well built. I said your district church will be well built. And the central church in the group will be well built. And the one in the region will be well built. Say amen for everybody. And the one in the state will be well built in Jesus' name. And as we build the house of God, the Lord will build your house. He will build your life. 
it will build your family. It's, it's the same. He has not changed. What he promised, he will do for others. Look at what he has said in Malachi chapter, chapter 3, verse 6. It says, For I am the Lord, I change not. I am the Lord, I change not. I always bless. I always look at the people that love me, that fear me, that are not to me, that obey me. And I always bless them. Look at verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Bring ye, is commanding everyone, pastor, preacher, worker, minister, members, all children of God. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith. Says the Lord of us, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you and pour you and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. This coming year is a year of outpouring, the year of outflowing, the year of overflowing blessings of God. Be faithful. Like Jacob said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be part of the great contributors to the building of God's house. And I'm going to offer one tenth of everything he gives me. And when he gives you a blessing, remember him. That's how to keep the benefit. Remember him. That is how to make the blessing overflow in your life. In verse 11, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not devour, destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Look at verse 12. And all nations shall call you blessed. All nations shall call me blessed. Just looking at you. Those who saw you here before. As they see you this coming year, they'll say, I see it, you are so blessed. Tell me your testimony. Something good is taking, in your, taking place in your life. It will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. All nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Somebody shout, Amen. Look at Matthew. Chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew, chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek the interest of his kingdom, the promotion of his kingdom, the progress of his kingdom. Seek the profit of his kingdom and seek the moving forward expansion enlargement of his kingdom seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you all these things shall be added unto you all these things shall be added unto you depend upon the lord from now on henceforth to this coming year your life will be a life of joy, a life of cheerfulness, a life of laughter, a life of achievement, a life of fulfillment, a life of greater, greater, greater blessings in Jesus' name. Point number two now, our diligence as honest precept keepers. Precept keepers. He is the promise keeper. We are the precept keepers. He gives us precepts. He gives us his word. He gives us his uh, commandment. And we obey him not half-heartedly. We obey him not superficially. We obey him not haphazardly, but we obey him diligently with all our heart, with all our soul, with all the excitement and the joy within us, with all that divine energy that he gives unto us. We're diligent about it. You see, there are people that obey the Lord, carry on the work of God, but they are sluggish. It's like they're not happy. It's like somebody is pushing them. 
It's like somebody is dragging them. It's like somebody is compelling them. The joy of service is not there. The cheerfulness is not there. The excitement is not there. And they are not diligent in keeping the precept of the Lord. But this year, serve the Lord cheerfully. Serve the Lord diligently. Serve the Lord zealously. And serve the Lord with all your heart. You'll be surprised at the miracles that will be taking place in your life. Before you pray, it will answer the prayer. While you are still speaking, it will say, Yes, here am I, my son, my daughter. Because I see your diligence, I'm going to bless you beyond your expectation. Everything you have prayed for, it will answer. Everything you have not prayed for, it will even give you. And you'll be surprised. Why this? Why this? Why this? And God will say, Because you are diligent. Because you serve me wholeheartedly. Because your mind is there. Because everything you've got, you bring into the service of the Lord. Let's look at the word in Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 26. Exodus 15, 26. And said, if thou wilt diligently, look at that, diligently hacking to the voice of the Lord thy God and will keep that which is and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all how many of his commandments all his statutes and i will put none of these diseases upon thee uh, which are brought upon the egyptians for i am the lord that he let thee you will enjoy good health and perfect health. If you diligently, diligently keep this word. Look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11. And I'm reading here from verse 21. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Reading from verse 21. I hope you bring your pen or whatever there uh, that you can mark this because... This coming year is going to be glorious. They told me chapter 11, verse 21. It says that your days may be multiplied. No short life. No premature death. Your days will be multiplied. And the days of your children, your children will not die prematurely. Your children will be healthy. If they are sick now, they will be well in Jesus' name. It says, the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them. Look at this, look at this, look at this. At the days of heaven upon earth. As the days of heaven upon earth. Mark that your Bible. And during this coming year, always open to that and say, as the days of heaven on earth. No sickness in heaven. No sickness in my body. No dejection in heaven, and no dejection in my life. No suicide in heaven, no suicide in my family. I didn't hear your amen. No poverty in heaven, no poverty in my life, and no sorrow in heaven, no sorrow in my life. As the days of heaven upon the earth. But look at verse 22. For if he shall diligently you see that he wants us to be diligent he doesn't want us to be half-hearted he doesn't want us to be superficial he doesn't want us to be sluggish and he doesn't want to be slothful diligence if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which i command you to do them to love the lord your god and to walk in all all his ways and to cleave unto him cleave unto him i'm expecting this new year that you will live the days of heaven on earth i will hear your testimony i will see the glory of god upon your life depending on that single word diligence look at chapter 28 determine chapter 28 and i'm reading from verse 1 Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt, what the next word, hearken 
diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God. Many voices will call you. But you know, if you are diligently paying attention to the voice of God, all those other voices will not mean anything to you. Tempters will try to call you. And opposers will try to call you. And the people who don't want you to succeed, they try to get your attention. They'll call you here, call you there, call you from everywhere. But if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God to observe, and to do all his commandments which I command you this day that the Lord your God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and shall overtake thee while you are running errands for God and doing the will of God and you are going here and there. The blessings of God will be searching for you. The blessings of God will locate your house. The blessings of God will locate where you are and will overtake you. If thou shalt hearken in unto the voice of the Lord thy God. What the Lord is expecting is diligence. Once you are diligent in obeying him, diligent in serving him, blessings are going to overtake your life. Look at Psalm 119, Psalm 119. I read from verse 3. In Psalm 119, verse 3, they also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts. How? Diligently. He has commanded us to keep his precepts precept keepers and to keep those precepts diligently. He doesn't want us absent-minded when we're in his presence. He doesn't want us absent-minded when we're doing the work of God. He doesn't want us absent-minded when we're running errands for him, when we're obeying his commandments. He wants us to hack into him and to keep his precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statues. Look at Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. Uh, those who are lazy, idle, superficial, there's no interest in what they're doing. They're just dragging on. Their lives do not have the excitement and the luster. But those who are energetic in serving the Lord, diligent in serving the Lord, great promotion will come upon your life. In Proverbs chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 29. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? Diligent in his business? The Lord Jesus said, don't you know, I must be by my father's business, the work of God, that's the greatest business. And the responsibility you have in the house of God, that's the greatest business. And you will leave every other thing, you know, and you will commit yourself wholeheartedly and plunge into the work of God. Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall not stand, he shall stand before kings, he will stand before the king of kings. And he will bless your life, and he will bless your family. And he'll bless your bread and bless your water. He'll bless your body and bless your life. Strength and health will be yours in Jesus' name. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. He shall not stand before the chaff, before the ordinary, and before the people that don't have any weight in their lives. You'll be a companion of the achievers in Jesus name a look at chapter 27 Proverbs chapter 27 I'm reading from verse 23 Proverbs 27 verse 23 be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks look well to thy heart you see the word diligent there again in your fellowship be diligent to know the state of every member there. Is he saved? 
Is she saved? Is she born again? Is she of the Lord? Be diligent to know the stage of the people in your zone, in your district, in your group. Don't just stay in one place. Move around to those district churches. Move around to all those local governments in the region. Move around to all those regions and local governments in your state. And be diligent to know. Don't say, I don't want to hear bad news. I don't want to hear that anybody is backsliding. I don't want to hear that anybody is sick. I don't hear, want to hear that any family is having a marriage problem. How would you solve the problem if you don't know? How would you solve the problem if you lock up yourself? I don't want to know. You must know. You must know. I don't want to know those who are jobless. I don't want to know those who are seeking to marry and they have not married. You must know. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy hearts. And as you know, you'll bring solution to their problem. I said you'll bring solution to their problem. Why you are solving other people's problems? Your problems are solved already. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. I'm reading from verse 2. It says, Wherefore do you spend your money for that which satisfies not? What do you spend your time on that which does not satisfy? What do you spend your skill on that which does not satisfy? What do you spend your energy? What do you spend your training? What do you spend all that you've got on that which does not satisfy? You will use your money wisely. You will use your strength wisely. You will use your skill and your wisdom wisely this coming year in Jesus' name. Look at this, look at this. Middle part of verse 2. Hacking diligently unto me. When you come to the service, when you come to the workers' training, when you come to the leaders' meeting, the two ears open, the mind open, the heart open, the life open, the heart open, because you want to listen and hearken diligently, diligently unto the Lord, and eat ye that which is good, and let your, delight, let your soul delight itself in fatness, incline your ear, come unto me here, and your soul shall live. Your soul will not die. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not. Nations that thou, uh, nations that know not thee shall run unto thee. Because the Lord thy God, because of the Lord thy God, and uh, for the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified thee. He has glorified thee. We'll see glory in your life, glory on your face, glory in your family. Things are going to be different, totally different. People will almost not recognize you again. Is that you? Yes, it's me, but I'm living the new life of a new year. Say amen. Our diligence as honest precept keepers. Zechariah chapter 6. Zechariah chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 15. They that are far off shall come and build in the temple of the Lord. They that are far off shall come and build in the temple of the Lord. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. And they shall come to pass they shall come to pass, and they shall come to pass. Tell me. Say it aloud. Say it with, uh, you know, people whose lives are transformed. 
if ye will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. You see that? Diligence. That's what he wants. And he wants that diligence to be in our lives and to show out in everything we do so that in this new year, we'll not do anything sluggishly. We'll not do anything dozing and sleeping. We'll not do anything and see if uh, they're dragging us. Doesn't uh, the pastor know, doesn't the GS know that, you know, we can be tired? Doesn't he know we're not like him? I didn't know you are not like me. I didn't know we don't have the same father. I didn't know we don't have the same savior. I didn't know we don't have the same Holy Ghost. What I know is we have the same father. What I know is we have the same promise. What I know is we have the same power. What I know is we have the same Savior and the same Deliverer. What I know is we have the same Comforter. We have the same Holy Ghost. And as the Lord is strong in me, it will be strong in your life. I say I'm not dragging my feet. I say I'm not slowing down. I say I'm not sleeping. I say I'm not, you know, kind of a tired. You will not be tired. Power will operate in your life in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 8. Second Corinthians chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 21. Second Corinthians chapter 8. We're reading from verse 21. Providing for honest things. Not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. And ye have sent, and we have sent with them, our brother, whom we have often proved diligent in many things. Diligent in many things. You know, there are people that say, um, the jack of all trade, master of none. That's if you're in your strength, if you're in your own life. But if God abides in you, but if the Lord is operating in you, you'll be jack of all trade and master of everything. Look at Paul the apostle. He was an apostle. Look at him, he was a prophet. Look at him, he was a great evangelist. Look at him, he was a great pastor. Look at him, he was a great teacher. Look at him, he was a great author. He was a great writer. He was a great warrior. He was a great minister of God. All, in all those things, he excelled all the people that were even having only one single ministry. You would excel. He said, we have often proved diligent in many things, but now much more diligent, now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you. You are diligent now, you'll be diligent even as we move on. I said, you'll be more diligent even as we move on. Look at Hebrews chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 14 Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 follow peace with all men now that is easy for you I said that is easy you are now a man of peace I said you are now a man of peace and a man of power a woman of peace Sisters don't want to answer that. And a woman of power. Look up here. You know, it's the people that don't have power, that don't keep peace with people. They quarrel on little things. They are afraid that that person may overcome them, overpower them, and before he overcomes and overpowers them, they're trying to make trouble with their little energy. But a man of power, a man of authority, doesn't force, he doesn't show anything, he acts as if there is no problem. And when people do anything to make him act authoritatively, he kinds of, um, you know, stays back because he has the power 
and nothing can hurt him is those who feel that something will hurt them those are the people who are fighting but nothing can hurt you nothing can destabilize your life nothing can injure you and nothing can bring you down you're a man of power you're a woman of power because of that you are a man, a woman of peace. It says, follow peace with how many people? All men. Because none of them can hurt you. None of them can take away the will of God from your life. None of them can win ultimately over your life. So, there's no, there's no reason fighting anybody. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. The people who are eager to see the Lord, they want to see the Lord in prayer. They want to see the Lord in their personal lives. They want to see the Lord in the day. They want to see the Lord in the dream. They want to see the Lord on earth. They want to see the Lord up in heaven. That's why holiness is their concentration. Nothing on earth interests them more than seeing the Lord. And they know that to see the Lord, they must follow holiness. So it's easy for them. Their eyes, their minds are focused on seeing the Lord. You will see the Lord. But see their lives now. Look at verse 15. Looking diligently. Let's say man, let's say man fail of the grace of God. Such people are diligent. Such people put all their heart, all their soul, all their mind into what they're doing because they want to see the Lord. You will see the Lord. I will see the Lord. Second Peter chapter three. Second Peter chapter three. I'm reading from verse fourteen. Second Peter chapter three, verse fourteen. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent. Be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace and without spot and blameless. Thank God that's the description of your life. First Peter, oh sorry, Second Peter, chapter one. I'm reading from verse five. Second Peter, chapter one, verse five. Beside this, give all diligence. Give all diligence. Pay attention. Let this be the primary sin and the purposeful drive of your life. Give all diligence and add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. You see, those who are diligent, and they are mindful of adding to their faith, uh, their virtue, and, and they want to get more knowledge, and want to get more, uh, they want to get more temperance, and uh, more patience, perseverance, more godliness, and uh, they want to get more brotherly kindness, they want to get more charity, and they're diligent about that. That takes all their time. It's like full time. They are adding and adding and adding spiritual qualities into their lives. They don't have time. Time to yield to the tempter, to yield to provocation, and to yield to any troublemaker. You'll be diligent this coming year in Jesus' name. But say it, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren, you'll not be barren, spiritually, family in the family, in the work of your hand, nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, be diligent to make your calling, be diligent to make your calling. Therefore, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, tell me. If you do these things, tell me. You shall never fall. Praise the Lord. No backsliding for you. 
For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly unto the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wherefore, verse 12 now, I will not be negligent. I will not be negligent. You will not be negligent. I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. You see, there are some people who are not begin because they say, Pastor, we know that. All those verses you are quoting, we know those verses already. Look at verse 12. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Look at this. Though ye know them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think each meet as long as I'm in this tabernacle. I think it meet as long as I'm in this tabernacle. Even as he was growing older, he didn't say, okay, I'm going to rest, I'm going to sleep. If you don't find me in the meeting, you know, I'm sleeping. The old man needs uh, more sleep. He said, no, even though I'm about to put off the tabernacle, uh, this tabernacle, my body, I will stir up. I will stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly, I must put off this tabernacle, even as the Lord Jesus has showed me, even though he was living in the last hours of the last days of his life, he was still diligent, I will be diligent. I said, I will be diligent. And we're coming now to point number three, and it's the decree in his permanent keeping the decree in his permanent in his permanent keeping uh, the word of the lord is a decree the promise of the lord is a decree the provision of the lord is a decree anything he says unto you is not like okay i may change it i may think it over he gives it out as a decree and the decree will be fulfilled god's decree in your life will be fulfilled Satan cannot change God's decree. Evil people cannot change God's decree. Even your own state of mind cannot change the decree. And whatever circumstance, whatever situation, the decree of the word will not be changed in your life in Jesus' name. Psalm 2 verse 7. Psalm 2 verse 7, I will declare the decree. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me. Is the Lord has said unto me. He said, Thou art my son. Talking to Jesus, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. He told Jesus that, but Jesus did not ask directly. Now we are the members of his body, and we are the people to claim that decree. It will be fulfilled in our lives. If you have not had converts before, you are going to have multiplied converts this coming year in Jesus' name. Psalm 148. Psalm 148, I'm reading from verse 6. Psalm 148, verse 6, He has also established them forever and ever. He has made a decree which shall not pass. That is, nothing can reverse it. He has made a decree on your behalf. He has made a decree. On my behalf, he has made a decree and which cannot pass, which cannot be reversed. Every word of God given to me this coming year, nothing will reverse it. Every word, every promise given to you this coming year must be fulfilled. It's a decree. It cannot be reversed in Jesus' name. 
Psalm 89. I'm reading from verse 34. Psalm 89, verse 34. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the sin that is gone out of my lips. All those promises were heard during the year from January to this December. And then at this final solution retreat, my covenant will I not break. Nor alter the sin that has gone out of my mouth. They'll be done. They'll be fulfilled. Joy is waiting for you. Happiness is waiting for you. Achievement waiting for you. Power waiting for you. Achievement. Victory. Success. Power in Jesus' name. Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 89. 119, verse 89. Look at this. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Why don't you read it with me? One, two, three, go. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Now listen to this and repeat it after I've said it. Forever, O Lord, thy promise is settled in heaven. Say this. Forever, O Lord, thy provision is settled in heaven. Say this, forever, O Lord, thy decree is settled in heaven. It will be done. I said it will be done. Let me now give you the secret of being successful every time. Being an overcomer every time. Being on top every time. Am I talking to somebody then? Where is he? Where is she? Here is the secret. You say what God has decreed. Don't say what Satan makes you feel in your body. Don't say what people threaten and make you say some words that she don't say like the children of Israel. They said, would God who had died in Egypt or even died in this wilderness, that's not the decree of God. That was not the word of God. They were saying what their discouragement made them to say. In this coming year, whatever happens, whatever happens, don't say what the enemy wants you to say, what Satan wants you to say. You will say only what God has decreed in heaven. You will decree what God has decreed. It will be done. You and God, God and you, you are in the majority. If God says yes, and you say yes, Satan cannot say no. I didn't hear you. If God makes a decree, and you only repeat that decree that God has made concerning you, that's all, that's all you are going to overcome. Job Chapter 22, Job, chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 28. Job 22, verse 28. Thou shalt also decree a thing. Were you? I said, were you? You know, there are people, they don't, they don't want to act like that. They say, I'm a human being. God knows you're a human being. He knows your brother, he knows your sister, he knows your child, he knows your son, he knows your daughter. And he says, I have made a decree already that we are going to be blessed. Take that word from me and say what I say. Verse 28, thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. And it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. This coming year, no darkness in your pathway. No failure in your pathway. And there is no fear in your pathway. 
you will overcome. I will overcome. You have overcome already. Look at Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23. We're reading from verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Not that the son of man that he should repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? As he said, and shall he not do it? As he said, and shall he not do it? He will do it. As he spoken, and shall he not make it good? He will make it good. Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. And I cannot reverse it. Anybody who can reverse the blessing of God in your life this year? No. He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither has he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord is God is with him. The Lord our God is with us. The Lord your God is with you. The Lord my God is with me. And the shout of a king is among them. The shout of a king is among us. God brought them out of Egypt. He has, he has a seat where the strength of a unicorn. Surely, somebody help me shout surely. I didn't say just to say it. I said shout surely. There is no enchantment against Jacob. Surely, there's no enchantment against you. They do it in the depth of the sea. They do it in the sky. They do it on the mountain. They do it in the forest. They do it in the bush. There is no enchantment against you this year. It says, neither is there divination against Israel, against you. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel and of you what God has done. What God has done. What God has done, the Lord has done it. We will see it in your life. We will rejoice with you. This coming year is a great year. And it's a glorious year. And you will not lack anything in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen well, thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. I will hasten my word to perform it. He will hasten his word, it will be performed in your life in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 12, Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 28. Therefore say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, there shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. None of his promises for you prolonged anymore. But the word that I have spoken shall be done, says the Lord. Every word you heard at the retreat shall be done, says the Lord. Every promise, every provision you claimed during that uh, final solution retreat shall be done in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 55, I'm reading here from verse 8. Isaiah 55, reading from verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither. The rain coming down, and returneth not thither. Look up here for a moment. The rain is falling, and then somebody is standing, and is doing this, doing this. Go back, go back. Will the rain go back? 
is breathing, is speaking to the sky. Go back. Will the rain go back? And he's uh, making incantation. The rain is falling down and he's making incantation. Go back, go back. Will it go back? The blessings of the Lord is coming like a rain upon you. Anybody making incantation? Anybody making a magical announcement or whatever? Go back, go back. It's too late. It's wasting his time. The blessings are pronounced on your life for rain. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not hither, but watereth the earth, and maketh to bring forth the and bird, and that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. Look at this, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish in your life. It shall accomplish in your family. It shall accomplish in your ministry. It shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I have sent it. For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace, it says, the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of thorn shall come up the fair tree. Instead of briar shall come up the mature tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Your blessings are settled. Your blessings are secured. Settled in heaven forever, they'll come like rain upon you this coming year. And all the benefits of the final solution will receive them much more will abide, will remain in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Depend on the heavenly promise keeper. Diligently keep as honest, uh, like honest um, precept keepers, the word of the Lord. And the decree your blessing will be permanently kept in your life in Jesus' name. You are blessed. Say, I'm blessed. Nothing can reverse it. May heaven confirm the blessing permanently on every one of your lives in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and pray. Don't be tired. Don't be weak. Don't be weary. Let's rise up and tell the Lord we're depending on the heavenly promise keeper. He cannot fail. He cannot fail. He says, I will hasten my word to perform it. He will do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. And diligently keep the precept of the Lord. And the decree that has come out concerning you, that decree will not be reversed in your life in Jesus' name. Congrats. Victory has come for you permanently in Jesus' name.